there is, we looked at the, uh, the statistics of the number of animals killed in New South Wales in their shark control program versus the number of animals killed in WA for their shark control program. And then the number of shark encounters in New South Wales versus the number of shark encounters in WA. And I think there was approximately 12 shark encounters in New South Wales, 11 shark encounters in WA. In New South Wales, we're at, with these latest statistics that came out since 2016, these are figures since 2016, it's about 800 marine animals that have been killed. WA, for the same number of interactions with humans, only one animal has been killed. So if you look at the two policies, it, I find it really surprising that our federal environment minister seems concerned about the way they're, th they're doing things in WA and not the way that we're doing things in New South Wales. So it seems a bit crazy that we're still going with these lethal systems here in New South Wales and Queensland to me. It seems like that's evidence enough that we can hopefully move forward to non-lethal methods here in New South Wales and Queensland. Is there any other questions now? Um, you can direct your questions or any comments to any of our panel members. Um, anybody like anything to say or any more questions? You guys are definitely a quiet bunch today. Um, is there any more comments from any of our panel members? Anybody have any closing comments they'd like to say? And everybody's welcome to come up and have a chat with us personally afterwards as well. Um, no questions are out of bounds. If there's any, any um, questions about my incident as well, I'm more than happy to answer those. Um, I know it's sort of a bit hard to ask, but I'm more than happy to talk about it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned before that um, my incident was actually by about a four metre great white shark. So. Um, yeah, it was pretty crazy, but I'm still so, so happy to hear that the great white sharks are being protected because, um, as I said, it, it left me hungry to find out more about these creatures and that's led me to see the importance of them in our ocean. So as Joni and Mike explained, that they have very, very important roles in regulating ecosystems below them. And um, I think that's just such an important thing to see and um, getting in the water, like Mike was talking about, and seeing sharks and their behaviour firsthand as something that with the ecotourism and diving with sharks, I would definitely recommend to anybody. So I've actually done that since my incident and it really does give you a completely different idea of what sharks are and how they work. So they're definitely not these aggressive, crazy animals full of teeth like Joni mentioned before. They, they are curious and calculated and very careful and they are actually majestic and beautiful. So if we can all start to see them that way, then, you know, like, like Mike compared them to cats and dogs, so more people are actually killed by dogs, but we're still quite loving towards them. So dogs don't even have quite as an important role in the ecosystem as sharks. But um, sorry, I'm carrying on a little bit. I'm just trying to get you guys talking. Does anybody have any questions or comments they would like? Uh, what happened to me? Uh, I was actually attacked by a great white shark. Um, how long ago was that now? Seven years ago. So um, yeah, I, I was swimming back towards my board after coming off when I was wakeboarding and the shark came straight up from under the water, uh, breached out of the water with me in its mouth, my whole head and arm. So I am extremely lucky to still be alive. Um, I lost a lot of function, a, a lot of my left arm was sort of removed. I don't know how the nice way to say that is. Um, and yeah, I started losing blood very quickly. I um, was very lucky to be rescued and got to hospital just in time to still be here today to talk about it. As I said, um, obviously it sparked my curiosity and sharks to learn more about them at the time. Um, and that's what's led me to be here to talk about their importance in our environment. So um, it's hard to notice now because the surgeons did such an amazing job putting me back together, but you can kind of see the scars here on my arm. Um, yeah, so um, also the right side of my face down there. You can't really see so much at the moment because um, the scars have healed up so well. Um, but the nerves were severed in my face as well. And um, yeah, it was, it was an absolutely terrifying experience. Um, yeah, that's what happened to me. <laughs> Any other questions? Any other comments?
Yeah, that's right. The shark definitely did mistake me for something else. That's Thank you for adding that, Sarah Jo. Um, yeah, I definitely don't believe that we are on the menu of sharks. So um, I think it's an absolute testament to their sensory systems and intelligence that they don't mistake us for food more often. When you think about how many people are in the oceans for recreation today and the low level of these incidents that do happen, it just goes to show that we're absolutely not on the menu. Because if we were, there would be a lot more incidents. Like, we would be such easy pickings. We're, we're really not that good in the water, are we? So I think that's, like, I'm kind of living proof, maybe, that they don't want to eat us. Because if a shark of that size wanted to eat me, I'm pretty sure it would have. So um, I, I assume it spat me out about as quick as you'd spit out a sour grape. <laughs> Realistically, we're of no nutritional value to them. Anybody else have any comments from the panel? Yeah, I think that's been great. I know I've learned a lot today. I hope you guys have as well. Um, we'll be hanging around, so feel free to come up and chat to us as well if you have any other questions or comments or just would like to discuss anything. If you are around tomorrow, you can hear some more from Sarah Jo Logan and from Mike Scotland as well. And from myself, we'll all be doing presentations again tomorrow. So we'd love to see you. Um, and yeah, thank you so very much for coming and being part of the forum today. Thanks very much, Lisa. And thanks to all five of our experts today. You'd, <coughs> you'd agree that there was a very good uh, forum? Yeah. So uh, why don't you join with me again in thanking our five experts here today. Thank you very much.
and welcome to the Australian International Dive Expo. In just a few minutes time, we'll have our next speaker in the uh, Marine Education Program, and that's Johan Boschoff from Ozdiver Magazine. presentation please here at the Australian International Dive Expo we have a green education program a list of speakers over the next two days and our next speaker is Johan Boschoff Johan will be talking about his underwater explorations, the quest to be first. Please take a seat now because Johan is about to commence his presentation. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me, the Mac? And you guys? Um, yeah, welcome. Are you going to join us or are you going to stand there? Sorry. Hello. Are you alright? Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, um, my name is Johan. I'm originally born in South Africa, but I'm living in Perth now. And when they asked me I needed to do a thing for you guys on something about technical diving, exploration, things like that, I thought about a thing and I named it the quest to be the first. Now, a lot of you guys, I mean all of you or most of you guys are divers, you've seen the final photo. You see the final discovery that people see. Like, remember the kids that was trapped in Thailand? Everybody saw the final thing and the kids were saved and stuff like that, but nobody see what happened behind the scenes for something that's really spectacular about. If you go and see, for instance, I was one of the teams that found one of the, the city pants in South Africa as well, the amazing living fossils, but nobody knows what's behind the scenes, what happened. So I decided to tell you guys a little bit more about itself. So a thing that was quite interesting, many years ago in South Africa, Southern Africa, there's a place called Namibia. So, after World War I, in 1950, when the whole, the, the whole war was finished, the basic, the troops came out and said they don't want to give the ammunition, the tanks, and all the weapons to the enemies. So they said, let's go dump them into specific sinkholes around the area. So, I mean, that's quite nice and things like that. So, the government of Namibia came to us and said, listen, you know, I want to go and see or we need to go find out, is the rumor true what they said so many years ago? And we said, yeah, we can go and have a look. So the first question we asked them is, how deep is those places? 